I've got a question for you. When you go to the grocery store, do you pick the big, plump, juicy, ripe red tomatoes or the weird, multicolored, shriveled, wrinkly, oozy tomato off of the shelf? Did you say the big, plump, juicy, ripe red tomato? Well, of course you did, because it looks more appetizing. So if you're a tomato farmer, then every year you harvest some of the seeds from your tomato crops that you can plant the next year. So which of the seeds are you going to choose to plant? The ripe tomatoes or the oozy tomatoes? Again. Of course, the ripe, delicious tomatoes, you're gonna to wanna to sell a lot of those, but save seeds from some because more people are gonna buy them. This process is called artificial selection or selective breeding, where people pick the parent organisms with the desirable traits that they want to get offspring with those desirable traits. For example, tomatoes that grow in the wild are very small and very bitter, nothing like tomatoes that we would be used to today. Like they look even smaller and more shriveled up than like cherry tomatoes. But after hundreds of years of artificial selection, we have big plants that make big, plump, juicy, red, delicious tomatoes. One of our most dramatic achievements from selective breeding came from our relationship with wolves. About 10,000 years ago, humans and wolves began living in a mutual relationship. We both have a need for packs, for security and sense of belonging, um, and we're both hunters. And so wolves and humans sort of just got along famously. Through years of living side by side with dogs and selecting the ones with the traits that we liked, we made literally all the dog breeds came from wolves. When you look at a wolf and another dog like say a husky, you're like, okay, I can see where that happened. You look at a different kind of dog, like maybe like a Labrador and you're going, hmm, really? But when you start looking at things like wiener dogs, you're like, how did that come from a wolf? Like no way. There must have been something like a wiener wolf running around that we made the wiener dog out of. But nay, that is not what happened at all. So what we have with wolves is a natural variation. Some wolves have longer legs than other wolves and some wolves have shorter legs. Some wolves have slightly bigger ears. Some have slightly bigger snouts. And so some human somewhere along the way decided they really liked those wolves with those short legs and they were gonna breed those short-legged wolves with other short-legged wolves. Eventually they honed in on other traits like snout length and ear length and the type of coat and over a thousand years, hundreds of generations, you wind up with very short-legged floppy ear parents that give you a lovely wiener dog. And today we still continue to choose the parents with the wiener dog traits that we like to breed with other parents to get wiener dogs that are the wiener dogs that we're interested in. Now, conversely, if we had a wolf that had pretty long legs and a little bit of a shorter coat and we bred those with other wolves that had a shorter coat and then wolves that had a short coat and floppy ears over and over again, many generations, we could wind up with a glorious Labrador, like my very majestic beast that lives at my house. And so this process takes lots of years, lots of generations, small changes in each generation to get the dog that we're looking for. So what have humans artificially selected? Well, all of our pets, cats, dogs, hamsters, whatever, are not wild animals. They're things that we've made for ourselves. Same thing with livestock, cows, pigs, horses. All of our crops are food plants. And we've done this to get the traits that we need. If we want food, it's better food, more food per plant so that we can live the life that we do today.